Some of you may have seen in the Green Bay Press Gazette about the city of Green Bay and the Packers being at odds over the lease of a Lambeau Field right behind me. And to provide some perspective from the city side, we are joined by the mayor of Green Bay himself, Eric Genrick. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Mayor. Woo, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for so having me. We got a mayor on this show. We got a mayor on the show. What's going on? We got a mayor on the show. Things are good. Happening? How are you guys doing? Doing Great. well. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, obviously, and I just want to be clear before before oh, we get into it. Like I'm, I'm not the the Nicolay Law guy. There's a little bit of a <laughs> one set. no a shade. Bit of a resemblance. Maybe this is a this is a choice, a, a sectorial choice on your part, but not one in homage to uh, Nicolay Law. We understand it, but we thank Nicolay Law for uh, helping us out here at Cheesehead TV, as always. Oh, of course. So, all right, all right, Mr. Mayor, let's the brass tacks. Let's let's get down to this because obviously we're not here to get your thoughts on the Packers' first round draft pick, who that might be, who you want. Although maybe we'll solicit that later on this afternoon. But clearly, yeah, there was an article I in. I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> there was an article in the Green Bay Press Gazette a couple weeks ago regarding negotiations between the city and the team over the lease of Lambeau Field, and I'm sure. And I, in fact, I am sure because I got messages to this effect that there are folks out there, Packers fans, who had no idea that the Packers lease the land, Lambeau Field, etc. What? They don't own it? Correct. They do not own it. And the only reason I knew that before that article dropped is because I'm friends with Corey Banke, who talks about this nerd stuff all the time. So I like can't escape it. But I think most people were probably surprised. So can you give us the 30,000 foot view of how this came to pass and your the city's part in it. Right. Yeah. So it's obviously a very long story, but but long story short, uh, the city of Green Bay, um, you know, along with the Packers, obviously constructed Lambeau Field and opened up in in 1957 after uh, Packers moved away from from City Stadium over at over at East High. So there's been a long standing relationship goes back even farther than that, right, between the the city and the team. Um, but we've had Lambeau Field as a city-owned facility since 1957. Uh, you fast forward to the early 2000s, there was uh, the sales tax that was approved um, by referendum um, by Brown County taxpayers. The stadium district was uh, was created as a result. So that is you know, still an ongoing body. We have three members of the stadium district board. There's three that are appointed by the county and then there's one from the village of Eshwabanon. Um, but if the Packers are interested in extending the current lease agreement, that we have um, with with the team, which runs um, as it stands to 2032, but either party can extend mm -hmm. um, ultimately another 10 years. So that gets you to 2042. Um, the Packers have an interest in in renegotiating and extending the terms of that lease. So so they approached the city actually probably for the first time back in uh, 2019. Then um, it may be early 2020, but uh, you know, as you'll remember, the the pandemic hit right before so, the pandemic. Uh, right. Everybody, right. Uh, you know, everybody <laughs> had uh, had other things to to attend to. So they reengaged with the city. Um, you know, I think it was in 2022. Made it clear that that that, that they were serious about renegotiating. Um, so so we uh, retained outside counsel so that we could engage in a really earnest way with them. Um, had a, a number of uh, of conversations between our respective teams, extending over, I mean, between 11 and, and 12 months. Um, had some, you know, our folks felt like we had some really good conversations with them. Um, the Packers representatives um, agreed to a number of items verbally. Once we received their offer, which was uh, 5 p.m. on a Friday, which, you know, may, maybe gives you a sense. <laughs> Friday news dump. Very good how they thought we were going to receive that um a lot of the items that that we thought we had a verbal agreement to um were not anywhere to be seen in the document and i think the thing that's probably um easiest for people to wrap their heads around and it was maybe most jarring to us was the suggestion on the packers part that the city should take 31 million dollars less over the extended term of the lease um than we would receive if we were to simply extend those terms that we have today. Um, so the Packers have talked, uh, you know, a fair amount about not asking for public money. Um, $31 million is real for the city of Green Bay. Um, 
it's maybe not as real to the Packers who are talking about $1.5 billion of improvements to the stadium that obviously we would love to see and we would love to collaborate with them um, on that. But, you know, $31 million is that's that's real money that that goes a long way to provide police and fire and, uh, you know, re- repairing our roads and, and doing everything that, that we do here in the city of Green Bay. So so that was, you know, one of the elements that uh, that, um, you know, was pretty jarring to us. The fact that, as I said, a lot of the points that seem to have verbal agreement on both sides were not reflected in that. We just felt like, hey, like, you know, it's, it wasn't a tactic for us to to cease negotiations. It was just a recognition of the fact that, OK, apparently we're not making any progress. So once you guys are ready uh, to come back with a with a, a, a really substantive and sincere offer um, that we can mull over a bit, then we can get back together. Ken, OK, I'm glad there's a lot to unpack there. And I want to start with kind of what you ended up regarding, you know, the cease of the ceasing of negotiations and wanting the Packers to put forth something that reflects the conversations you've had over the course of the last year, which is understandable. And it's funny because we have a, you know, Cheesehead TV happy hour that happens every week. And when this story first broke, I think we had the happy hour the day after. And Corey and I were talking about it. And usually, these are very kind of informal conversations. We bounce things back and forth. And Corey started yelling at me because I said, (laughs) well, why doesn't the city put forth their own written proposal? Like, from what I've read, now I'm not in the negotiations, but from what I've read in Rich Ryman's article, which, by the way, anyone watching or listening here can read. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to see the article we're referencing, because that's what basically kicked off this whole public conversation. And just to reinforce why, what you say there, Aaron, what, like, please, please yeah. pay, please pay for Green Bay Press Gazette subscription. Yes, and, well, and read, trust me. And read the thing. The link, money. Because the link is to a subscription, so they have to subscribe yeah. if they want to read it. Yes. <laughs> so that's the that was my first question is, so apparently the Packers have put forth multiple proposals, right? And the latest one, as you're indicating, didn't reflect some of the conversations you've had or some of the points that have been agreed upon in conversation. So why not turn around and offer up your own counter proposal? Right. And, and this is kind of where I ended, where we, you know, we just felt like the proposal that they offered was so unreflective of the conversations that had taken place that it really mm-hmm. wasn't going to be fruitful to continue to engage at that, at that level. At the same time, I've said, um, you know, to the Packers since, you know, we, we ended the formal negotiations a little while back. Like if President Murphy wants to get me on the phone or have lunch or however you want to do it to kind of um, reset expectations, you know, I'm absolutely available for that and we'll answer the call or, or you know, grab, grab lunch or whatever it might be. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not as if, you know, we're ceasing communications with the team. Obviously, we have a lot to prepare for. On all kinds of fronts, but um, you know, with the draft just about a year out, we're going to have you know a lot of a lot of meetings and a lot of preparation that needs to be done on, on you know on the part of the city, of course, but the, the team and Discover Green Bay and you know businesses and residents and all the rest. So so there's going to be a lot of engagement uh, on that front and and on other fronts. Um, and you know, the obviously you know I'll I'll talk to Mark whenever he has an interest in um, in having a conversation. Do you have to go? Is this true? Do you have to go to Detroit for when the draft is over uh, in a couple of weeks, and then they kind of turn it over to okay, Green Bay, you're next. Are you there with the Packers brass? Um, I, I don't know exactly how that's going to play out necessarily. I am going over um, with the police chief and fire chief. There's a bunch of folks from the Packers going, of course, as well as Discover Green right. Bay. I think Village of Ashwaubenon um, and the county have a, have a few individuals who are headed over there. I don't know when that formal handoff takes place. I had heard there was maybe something in early May um, where they they might do something like that. Um, But yeah, I'm not privy to to some of those details. Now, kind of rewinding here a little bit, you you mentioned the the stadium, the football stadium district, the Green Bay Brown County Professional Football Stadium District, I believe is their full name. Can you tell people what that is and how it's part of these? It's not a part of the talks, but they are privy to the to the lease and they are a major player here. What can you tell people what that entails? Yeah, I mean, again, it, that's kind of a long and complicated history. I sort of alluded to it in the opening where the, the district board was created by state legislation um, when the referendum took place in the early 2000s. 
their purpose and, and real reason for being uh, was to collect sales tax revenue um, and and distribute it for the purposes of um, you know doing the renovations that that took place um, with Lambeau Field. And so, um, you know, once once that responsibility has ceased, some could argue that that um, that responsibility really has already ceased. But once it's determined that that their reason for being has ended, um, ownership of the of the facility returns in its entirety to the city of Green Bay. Right now, there's so many kind of things. I, there's so many avenues I could go down here, but to the stadium district part, just because I read about it yesterday uh, in regards to, I guess, tabling a decision about whether to, you know, utilize a certain amount of money to build a third locker room, right? One of the complaints, I, I'm generalizing here, but I'm going to call it a complaint that I read about in the article from the city side, right, was that there aren't enough events happening at Lambeau Field. And I think there, the city is on a very fair track as far as there's a huge opportunity here that is being lost by this monster stadium sitting right behind Mr. Corey Banky, which, by the way, I find hilarious that there is literally con uh, construction going on but over his uh, right shoulder. But there is like this huge opportunity that is kind of going by the wayside. Well, does the stadium district understand the unique nature of what Lambeau Field is like and what their relationship is with the state, etc.? Because like. We went to London, Corey and I, a couple years ago to watch the Packers play at Hotspur Stadium. Hotspur Stadium has three dressing rooms, has three locker rooms for that exact reason, to attract outside interest, to have other things going on at the stadium besides the events it was built for. So I just, it feels weird to me that, okay, here's something that, hey, we want to do this. We want to build stuff so that we can attract all sorts of other types of entertainment events, etc. Yet we've got a board member saying, "Well, I got to find out what they do in other cities." Well, other cities are taking hundreds of millions of dollars of public money. Like it just feels like a really odd disconnect. Yeah, and I mean, I can't speak for the stadium um, board district members, obviously, but um, from what I could gather, I mean, they were just looking for a little bit more justification. Um, I didn't see anything, at least reported, where they're saying, "Hell no, we're not interested in a." in a third locker room, they're probably just looking for right. a little bit more of an argument. Um, but to your point about, you know, especially the city, I think a lot of community members though, um, also wanting more events to take place at Lambeau Field, heck yeah, right? And and that's, that's a huge yeah. benefit to the community at large. It's also a revenue generating opportunity for the Packers. Um, and it, we, we just feel very strongly that they could take better advantage of what is one of the most amazing facilities in sports um to put on some fantastic events i was at the, the soccer match with uh with um family and oh, friends and had a great experience i missed it by a Palmer day Street. i hate it oh it looked amazing yeah, it was it, it was amazing. fantastic and they, i mean we had like three weather delays like you know that <laughs> that is like, yeah. it was still a, it was a fantastic experience and and you know our perspective it's just like you know lambeau field is not a museum it is a football field it is a stadium and i think there's a way that you could better utilize it while still really protecting the field because I know they take that very seriously, which they should. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like that drives way too much inside that building as far I as agree. Well, we've got to protect the grass. we got to protect the. Yeah, you say that, but then dudes are slipping on Lambeau Field every single game. Like it feels like the groundskeeper has more say than some of the people who are supposedly in charge. Like, I've, I've, yes, you're I've right. Actually it's been not told a that, by the way. I've been told that the groundskeeper is second to Mark Murphy, and I've actually had one person tell me the groundskeeper has more sway than Mark Murphy. But I do think they kind of are one in the same you point. Have his Phyllis, you, have his, <laughs> you have his number? <laughs> Philosophically, I, I do think even this lease negotiation, and I know I'm not trying to take us off tangent, but I do feel like this lease negotiation and the fact that there's not a lot of events at Lambeau Field, despite the promises, have a lot to do with this extreme philosophy that football is the most important thing. And you're talking to somebody who thinks that Green Bay Packers football is the most important thing. But in my opinion, having lived here now for three years and even before, I feel like sometimes the Packers don't realize they're an entertaining, they're, they're an entertainment complex. And 
like you can chew, you can walk and chew gum at the same time, as they say, and it just feels like the excuse is always football is the number one thing, which all of us want to be the number one thing, but it shouldn't really come at the expense, in my opinion, of other things that are important to, you know, uh, the fans, the the people that live here, et cetera, et cetera, like concerts, like, you know, these kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously I have a different perspective than, than the team. You know, the most important thing to me is is the community, right? The fact that the Packers are community owned, um, you know, we we would just love for them to demonstrate their community mindedness at, at, at every turn, at every opportunity. And they do a lot of fantastic things in the community. Nobody's saying otherwise. Um, but in the context of the, these negotiations, you know, that's where we've you know, pressed on them a little bit in terms of making real estate investments within the city of Green Bay, you know, um, making some local hiring commitments and commitments to labor standards uh, for the workforce to really create a, a pipeline to a profession for, you know, for kids and teenagers and young people who are growing up here and could really benefit from a career in the trades, for example, and, and just, you know, more ironclad community benefits that that require certain dollar level contributions to charities within the city of Green Bay. That's all stuff that they could do and billionaire owners have done in plenty of other places. And so when you look at a community owned franchise such as the city of Green or the, the Green Bay Packers, rather, that's the kind of stuff that I feel should sort of like come naturally to them. Um, and we'd love for them to make those commitments. I'm glad you brought that up. I find that it's a very interesting kind of point that you make there as far as the community ownership, right? And the ideal that they have these stock sales that certainly they have only ever, and it's what they're earmarked for, right? Made in in investments within the, the, the building itself in Lambeau Field and the surroundings, right? It's not like they're going out and doing other things with the money. Like it always goes back into the team. And I think, you know, you look at their charitable endeavors, uh, there, you, we, Corey and I used to sit through it every year. I now do it. Corey never goes to the shareholders meetings anymore, but we hear it's from increased. them about it's everything, increased. everything it's they do. It increases it, uh, no, no question about it, but it's fascinating when you talk about the idea of in investing in the community, which I think the Packers do. Now I, I saw your quote about, well, title town is across the street, right? Like it's not in green Bay proper, which is fair is a fair point. But I, I would push back a little bit only in the sense that the Packers are not city planners. They're a football team. And to, your po to Corey's point, yeah, they're entertainment. No question about it. But, you know, they aren't taking public money. They are taking money from people who are fans who want to support the team. Uh, but they're not going down the road of the Brewers who just got, what, $500 million worth of public money between the state, county, city, and are now locked in through 2050. You know, because of that, now they put in 150 of their own, but, uh, you know, they don't go down the road of a, the Raiders or, or the, the Buffalo Bills. I'm sitting here in Buffalo New York Bills, yeah. as a taxpayer, yeah, yeah. footing, helping foot the bill for a Bills stadium that I will probably never go to unless the Packers play there. You know what I mean? Right. Like none of that is occurring in Wisconsin and Green Bay with the Packers. I think they do quite a bit as far as investing into the community. I think, as as the, the the article suggested, if there are certain things that the city feels strongly about, like we could really use your help here, or here's something we're passionate about, and we think the Packers could really make a push. I don't. I just think that's fair from a team that doesn't have a billionaire owner that you know is sitting there going, "We are trying to survive through not only you know the length of this lease, which is probably why they wanted to renegotiate in the first place, but." Make sure we're fine and strong and good to go after the CBA negotiation happens in 2030 or whenever that's due to be. I've, actually, the negotiations will probably happen 2029, 2028, whatever. But yeah. so that that's the thing where I'm like, they're not city planners. I, I don't understand the city's desire to to lock them into these things. Yeah, and we're, and we're not we're not asking them to be city planners and we don't want them to be city planners. Right. Well, what we're looking for is co-investment in development projects in the city of Green Bay. They're sitting on roughly, you know, I could be off on the numbers a little bit, but five hundred million dollars in an investment fund. Um, you know, they have an obligation ah, to, to make yes, money the investment on that investment, fund. right? 
Yeah. Right. So where they, um, they actually you know, what, so lost like $20 million last year because the market went down, et cetera. But that's imagine that like being something that a billionaire owner can just reach in his pocket and throw at you that the Packers don't have that. And if Jerry Jones and, you know, Bob Crafts and the, of the world want to eliminate the Green Bay Packers, they want to kill revenue sharing, which, yes, remote possibility. But that is Jerry Jones mindset, right? The Packers have that fund specifically, not just a rainy day fund. Yes, they invest in it, but that is their like more than just a rainy day fund. It is their ability to survive if things go south. No, totally. And I, I wouldn't disagree with any of that. Our, our suggestion is make a few wise investments here within the community, you know, in the real estate world, in the city of Green Bay. Don't necessarily put all of that money on Wall Street. And, and again, you know, we're not interested in having them behave as city planners. Um, you know, we've got a whole department that does that work, does it really well, takes it very seriously. You know, we just we want you know, an ironclad agreement with the team. Um, we unfortunately aren't able to to just survive on goodwill or good intentions or yeah we'll take a look at some proposals down the line that that's not how a serious negotiation takes place okay so then i come back to why not give them a counter proposal something that you're actually looking at and you want investment in right and again that, that's where i would go back to the 11 12 months of conversations that took place we felt like we had some good verbal agreements in the room, the the offer went back to the man behind the curtain. It came back and it was <laughs> unrecognizable, you right. know, legitimately unrecognizable to what was discussed. And so, again, it was just an indication of maybe not enough respect being paid to the to the negotiation process itself or, you know, just not a level of seriousness that, that we were expecting. Um, I don't know exactly how to characterize it, but um, we just didn't feel like it was it was worthwhile. You know, the city has limited resources, right? And we've retained a really highly qualified law firm to engage in these negotiations. Um, if the discussions are not going to be fruitful, it's not responsible for us to continue, you know, paying them to have those conversations with, um, with 1265. I, I'm not going to keep saying the same thing over and over, but it is interesting that that's the impasse, right? That you, you want something that reflects the conversations you've had with the negotiating team, which I guess includes what Mark Murphy, Popke, Ed policy, maybe some lawyers. Right. And then I don't know who would all be involved on your side, but if those yeah, conversations being aren't being reflected, why not, why not put forth a proposal that does? Yeah. And, and to us, we just really need a reset. Right. And like I said, I'm available to Mark Murphy phone call, coffee, lunch, right. beers, like whatever it is. <laughs> but that's how Corey, you know, maybe it, I get it. I get it. Maybe it carry the G or two, you know, that, there you that go. Can help there with you things. go. Can you get a picture See, of Mark uh, holding and carry the G need. when you we need meet a, with them though? I need that. We need a beer summit. That's what we need. Right. Beer summit. I will I'll provide free carry the G and my house. <laughs> we can use my house as a neutral site so you can look at Lambo while you do it. There you go. What could go Perfect. wrong? I'm up for that. Anytime, any place. <laughs> like we'll we'll make that happen. But um, yeah, you know, if if we could restart things in in that way, I think I think that's the best way to do it. Well, uh, Corey, I don't know if you have anything else for the mayor other than like who he wants in the first round. But uh, I I really appreciate your time, Eric. Yeah, like, you don't have to come on this Podunk YouTube channel, and you do, and uh, I really appreciate it. No, yeah, I I appreciate you coming on. I. I what my last question is what why do you think that my my whole thing this whole entire time is why are we why are we dealing with the lease right now anyway so why why what do you think is the impetus what do you think is the urgency here is it the NFL draft like w what is it and I understand you know Aaron talking about the CBA right if you if you really want to get the CBA if you really want to have all your ducks in a row you need to have it by a certain time but you know why do you I know you said 2019 and now 2022 and like why do you think the urgency is right now I mean for us it's kind of theorizing you know what what from what we can gather and from what they've, they've said publicly, they want some financial certainty long term. Um, you know, they have certainty to 2042. They would like it farther into the future is what, you know, we've been told. So, you know, appreciate that. But from the city's point of view, the agreement that we have today is, is far and away better than that's 
um, than the one that's been offered to us. And so we don't, you know, we don't share the same sense of urgency. You know, we want to be as collaborative as possible, um, but I'm not going to, you know, lend my support to a deal that is um, is materially worse for the taxpayers and the residents of the city. At awesome. the moment, maybe long term, something, you know, is there that you guys can reach an agreement on and hopefully, uh, oh, yeah, obviously make both parties happy, but keep maybe not materially the exact same things in place. But I can't imagine that there's a, a road that the Packers would go down where they're going to rob you guys. You know what I mean? Like, I understand that, yes, that 31 million is going to go away, et cetera, but also their annual kind of you know, input from what's left over from the Brown County tax that dries up what 30, 31, right? When the CBA goes away or not goes away, but yeah. changes. So right. I, like you're talking about the impetus, they want long-term security the same way the brewers have, right. you know, the brewers are locked in through 2050. And the brewers took $500 million worth of public money. Right. Like, I don't think, I just yeah, don't think it's I mean, like, I don't think it's nefarious. I think it's, you know, an attempt to try and meet the market, so to speak. Sure. Yeah. And it, it's not insurmountable. I mean, I, I have full faith that, you know, we're going to be able to, to figure this out at, at some point. And like I said, I mean, you know, I've got uh, I've got good relationships with the, the folks over there. I think very highly of them. I, I think we're going to, you know, ultimately we're going to come together on this. And I'm a huge Packer fan. Right. Like, yeah, you are. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> last time I was over there and I wasn't feeling that great about things i stopped in the pro shop and spent like 130 dollars right like i just you know i can't <laughs> resist the urge to who to can get, who uh, can who can really i just I, so, I, but I, you know, I love the packers i love the city of green bay more and uh and so that's you know that's who i'm i'm paid to represent that's who i was elected to represent and that's that's what we're doing uh, I, I will just point out, and I kind of absolutely adore this. As you speak to us, you're in front of a City of Green Bay sign that literally utilizes the Packers G. Like, that's how that's right. symbiotic your relationship is, you know? So that's why I feel pretty good yeah, that, too. yes, it's a bump in the road and things are going to be, you know, maybe, who knows, publicly there'll be some sparring. I will say before, wait, before I let you go, just because I have you here and what the hell, right? How often do I get to talk to the mayor of Green Bay? Were you surprised that Mark said publicly that they were going to and obviously this would have come out anyway but like legit just said into a microphone yeah we were going to do all this stuff to the concourse and make all these 80 million Lambo. well now yeah 80 million dollars well now we're not going to do that like <laughs> that seems so weird to me it did it. i mean it wasn't it wasn't shocking to me because they were sort of um making that claim privately and so we felt like that was something that they were going to say publicly if they went public with anything, the fact that they went public mm -hmm. at all was a little bit surprising to me. Um, you had to you have know, known that, that when decision. you called Mark Murphy, though. You had to have. You had to know that was going to happen. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was definitely a possibility, but that was a choice that they made. Um, it's not something oh, yeah. that they <laughs> tend to want to do oftentimes. Uh, so the fact that they right. made that decision is interesting to us. You know, that's not that's not how we behaved, but you know, we'll be fine. But now, because they did, you're on our show, so that's that's a win in our in our book. <laughs> all I know, all I know, this is what I said last night. All I know is that 1265 is finally watching our show. So, Mayor, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I really yeah, we, we appreciate that's it. That's the only thing that we achieved here. I think I think that's a win. We didn't talk about overnight parking. We didn't we didn't talk about overnight parking at all. Maybe next time, but. Um, you know, we can, oh, we can hash that. Mr. Out. Mayor, like last time we like talked, that. we talked about that's that. My, and I don't want to get into it. But rules. Come on. Let's let's no, join. Let's join the 21st century. No, no I want to park hey, in front of Corey's house I'm, on the street. No, I'm saying, you know, we got a new we got a new city council. This conversation has come up, you know, multiple times, but um, we got a new city council. So, Aaron, if you want to put in, you know, a word to one of these new alders uh, and we'll see how it turns out. I'm, I'm all in. But hey, speaking of parking. Uh, did you see the, the the catastrophe the Brewers had on opening day, on opening day where they had like this automated oh, parking their, app that just completely app, didn't yeah. work? <laughs> that yeah, sounds right. That checks out. I love that it. One. That that checks out. That's what happens when you take public money. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Mayor, can't thank you enough. Uh, I'm sure there's like I, I I talked to the Packers intermittently the last couple of weeks, and I told them like. Yeah, we invited them on, by the way, for sake of complete transparency here. I 100% uh, 
offered up a spot, said, hey, come on board. Like, let's have a yeah, conversation. Yeah, we can negotiate this on Packer Transplants Live. Let's, let's get do it, it done, baby. Let's do let's it. Go, and baby. they declined. So, but right. they, they did say to like, you think people will be interested in this? I'm like, well, no, Corey and I are interested in it. That's why we're going to do it. <laughs> There's like maybe 12 other people that's, that's care about this. That's reason so enough. It's your show. Them. You can do yeah. whatever you want. We're, we're glad to provide them with the information. <laughs> Eric, right. really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the time, man. Yeah, great to see you guys. Really sincerely appreciate everything you do. So have a good one. Thanks, Eric. You too.